Hi, everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for another monthly webinar. Um, this month, we're going to be talking about responding to an emergency and the different ways that you can make a decision to help yourself during an emergency. Um, so we're going to just do our little welcome. We're going to go over our Ready Fairfax program, and then we will get right into um, the different steps that you can take. Um, and then we'll talk about what we have planned um, for next month, because Believe it or not, we're in July and August is next, which means that we are back to school. Um, so Ready Fairfax, again, is just our preparedness program in the county. Um, we come out and um, educate our residents on how to prepare for, respond to, and recover from emergencies. So as you guys know, we've been going through um, each month and talking about different topics. Um, so this month we're in July. Um, and we're responding to an emergency. So coming up um, in August, we have youth preparedness and back to school. In September, we have see something, say something, and going over our Until Help Arrives program. Um, and then later this year, we'll, talking, we'll talk about how to recover from an emergency. We'll talk about mitigation. And then we're gonna talk about um, our five-step neighborhood guide that we have so that we can take everything that we've learned this year and now talk about um, how we can use that in our community. So our phases of emergency management, um, I just wanted to bring this to your attention um, just to kind of show you where we are in that preparedness cycle. Um, so we um, can either start or end with mitigation. We always love to start with it um, to prevent any further effects of emergencies. Um, but we've talked a lot about preparedness, how to make a plan, how to make an emergency kit, um, how to stay informed, how to get involved. And now we're kind of moving to that during phase where we're going to talk about response and the things that you can do to protect your life and your property. Um, so like I said, later um, this year, we'll talk about recovery, um, but then we'll talk about how important mitigation is and the steps that you can take um, for that as well. So a lot of the things that we talk about come right from our community emergency response guide. Again, we have the templates to put together your emergency plans. We have the potential hazards, which we'll talk about. Um, and in those hazards um, and in those, those specific pages, you will see where we can go over um, what you can do before, during, and after. So let's talk a little bit about those hazards just as a review um, because it's been a couple months. Um, so earlier this year, we had Matt who joined us um, and he talked about what hazards affect our county. Um, and he was able to um, give us our um, threat index, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but here are some pictures of real emergencies that have happened in Fairfax County. So when we talk about emergencies, we talk about everyday emergencies. Um, oh, I, sorry, this is an animated slide and apparently it didn't animate. Um, so this everyday emergencies, then we talk about man-made emergencies, and then we can talk about our natural disasters. Um, so just to give you some context, um, these are some of our um, highest hazards. Um, so you can see winter storm and flash flooding, which tonight, um, and this afternoon, we've been experiencing some flooding um, in the eastern part of our county. Um, so those things just happen all of the time. Sometimes they're random. Um, today, we've gotten quite a bit of rain on one part of the county. So we've seen some flash flooding. Uh, but we also see severe storms. Um, we're in thunderstorm season. Um, we can't roll out a tornado. You can always see a tornado. Um, and then extreme temperatures. So we've been pretty lucky this summer so far. But um, we could see some increased temperatures in the next uh, month or so. So these are just some of our natural hazards. Um, again, they're, they're mostly weather related um, and they happen um, just because of, of storms that are coming across. Um, we are in hurricane season until the end of November, so after Thanksgiving. Um, so we're always keeping an eye on those tropics to make sure that we are not gonna get any effects of hurricanes here in Fairfax County, um, which is why you guys pay attention, you follow us on social media, um, and you've learned all the different ways of how you can get your information during an emergency. 
Um, so human caused disasters, we have a lot of things um, that pass through our area just because um, of where we are. So we're always just very conscious of that. Um, but again, we have some of our hazards and in the community emergency response guide, some specific ways you can prepare for and what you can do um, if those actually do happen. And then our everyday emergencies, um, it, you know, weather happens, but because of weather, we could see um, power outages, we could see power lines down. Um, we have medical emergencies that happen every day. Um, and then of course, structural fires. So um, we had um, obviously 4th of July yesterday. So, um, you know, just seeing people um, use, utilize those um, fireworks, um, just remembering to be safe and take proper protocol um, when disposing of them so that we don't have structural fires. So you can see this is just one of our um, our pages in our community emergency response guide. And I specifically picked this one today um, because acts of violence is one of the things that we're going to go over of what you could have to respond to depending on what situation you're in. Um, so we have um, some, some key terms that we use. Um, we'll go over what sheltering in place is. We'll go over what lockdown is. Um, but we'll talk about some of the different resources that um, you can learn ahead of time to help you make those decisions um, if you were ever in that situation. So before we can actually respond to anything, um, hopefully you guys have taken the steps now. We've talked a lot about preparedness, um, but I just wanted to go over that making a plan ahead of time and knowing what to do um, it really helps in the response phase. So in your planning process, um, you're going to go through making a general plan. You're going to figure out if you have um, an emergency at your house, where you're going to evacuate to. Um, this could include just your locations of where you would get out of your house if there was a fire. Um, so the, the basic things that we learn um, when we're little of you know, uh, stop, drop, and roll. This is our meeting place outside. Um, that's part. That's all part of the planning process. These are things that happen beforehand. Um, but also just knowing the terms. What does it mean to evacuate? What does it mean to shelter in place? What does it mean to lock down? Um, not only making a plan is important, um, but practicing your plan is even more important because you wanna make sure that your actual plan works. Um, so make sure that you test it. You also wanna make sure that you have your emergency kits ready. Um, so when we talk about um, locking down and sheltering in place in a little bit, uh, we will talk about um, how to use your kits, but this is all part of the planning process. We've talked a lot about emergency kits um, and now it's the time and the place to actually use them. Um, so three types of kits. Um, we have our shelter in place kit. So everything you need to su survive at home um, for at least three to five days. COVID was a great test. A lot of people who had um, shelter in place kits had extra toilet paper. They had um, canned food. They had shelf stable food. So these are all types of things that... Um, during an emergency, if you did have to shelter in place and stay in your home for a while, you have all of these things ready at home. Um, an evacuation kit. This can be something that you pick up and go easily. Some people keep it in their car, um, but don't get this confused with a vehicle kit. So in a vehicle, you do want to have things that will help you if you're stranded, but you also want to have vehicle specific items in case you get stuck um, out in the snow in case you get stuck somewhere um, or if your car breaks down. Um, so those are just some extra things that you're going to want in there. So in your shelter in place kit, um, this is really going to be a kit that you put together, you know, one of those big um, containers um, where you just put a whole bunch of stuff in it um, that would help you 
during an emergency. Um, so this is where you can put your flashlights, your batteries, um, some plates, um, cups, those types of things. So you have um, things to actually eat with. Um, a can opener. Most people forget a can opener. Um, and with canned food, you always want to make sure that you have a can opener. Um, so this is really meant to stay in your house. This should be put in your shelter in place location or somewhere really close that you can drag it in there. Um, sometimes you might have to shelter in place um, for a weather emergency um, where you would you might have to be there for like an hour. Um, for example, if there's a tornado warning um, or a tornado watch, you want to make sure that during that watch you're kind of getting these things ready. So in case you do have to go to that place during a warning, your stuff is already there. Um, an evacuation kit. Um, so I always tell people, um, or I always ask them, do you have an extra backpack at home? Yeah, of course I do. It's a great way to put together your emergency kit to evacuate. Kids can have their own backpacks. Mom and dad don't always have to carry everyone's stuff. Um, although it's way easier for parents um, to just pick up a backpack and go, um, it's really important to include your kids in that um, process of them making their own kit. So they have um, their own items and they can have it with them. So make sure that you guys are putting this together a suitcase also works too. So these are just some um, important documents. And we did talk about this um, in April when we talked about our emergency kits, but it's always just a good review um, because all of these preparedness actions that you have taken will help you when you need to actually put them into your response. So again, here's your vehicle kit. Here's some extra things to put in there. Um, a, a phone charger is, is a great thing to put in there um, in case you're going on um, like a car ride. Pop your phone on the charger because um, I don't know if you're like me. Um, my phone is always dying and I'm always looking for a charger. Um, so when you get in the car, just make it a habit um, to put your phone on the charger. That way, even if it's five or ten minutes, it just gets that little extra charge. Um, that you might need um, to get you through an emergency. Infants and children, they always need extra stuff. Um, so just make sure that you're preparing ahead of time, um, especially if you have to evacuate um, with a young child. You don't want to have to be running to the store um, to get stuff. So your diaper bag for your first four or five years is going to be your emergency kit. Um, throw a couple extra things in there um, and you guys you'll know what to do. Parents parents have a natural instinct of overpacking for their children um, and underpacking for themselves. Um, so just think about that, um, you know, when you're putting your stuff together. Special considerations, of course, um, individuals that have um, access and functional needs, um, as well as maybe pets and service animals, um, you want to make sure that you are um, accounting for those as well. Um, we know that people will not evacuate without their pets. Um, so it is way more helpful and it is easier on you, but it's also easier on your pet and your, or your service animal if you've made these preparations ahead of time and have things of comfort that they eat, that, that they like. Um, it makes it a lot less stressful. People with mobility issues, um, especially when you have to evacuate. Um, it is really important that you have these items together. Um, you know, just like like a tire patching kit um, for wheelchairs or extra parts or an extra battery. Um, things that you would need um, to take care of yourself if you couldn't go back home. Um, so again, these are all things that we're um, kind of building up to make that decision of what we're going to do. Um, especially people that um, are blind or have low vision, um, you know, making sure that you have those things um, to help you. We will, um, if you ever had to come to a shelter, um, you know, we do provide accommodations and we do have um, stuff that will help, but it might not get there right away. Um, so the better you can prepare yourself, the better it is um, for everyone. Um, if you are deaf, and, deaf or hard of hearing, um, if you use 
um, hearing aids, having extra batteries, just like you have batteries for your flashlights, make sure you have extra batteries um, with you. Make sure you have extra charging devices. Not all devices use the same chargers. So, um, you know, especially having an extra set of chargers is, um, you know, super helpful. And, you know, if you do have, um, you know, problems communicating or you prefer to write things down, if you have a notebook and a piece of paper with you um, and that and you show us that that's how you would prefer communicating, um, that is super helpful for us as well. So again, you know, just some things that would be, um, you know, more comforting um, for everyone. So emergencies are stressful. Um, so having, you know, fidget toys, um, even identification cards, letting um, first responders or, um, you know, people who are just trying to help know that someone has a disability. And the best thing that you can do is tell us what is best um, in how to interact with that person. Um, you can say, I don't like loud noises. I don't like sirens. Um, I don't like flashing lights. The more information that you can give us, um, the better. We want to make everything a good experience and, um, you know, make sure that we communicate and collaborate and coordinate um, with our residents. So the more information you can give us up front um, while you're planning, the better it is. Of course, um, staying informed, I do want to put a quick emphasis on um, one of our new tools called Community Connect, um, and that is a tool through the fire department. And we have um, a new page. It is um, It has alerts and emails where you can find information on Fairfax Alerts, Community Connect, and the Emergency Health Profile. In Community Connect, you are able to go in and share information about your property, who lives with you, if anyone has any disabilities or access some functional needs, um, and your pets. That information is going to be available to first responders when they are going, when they are dispatched to your address. Um, so it is address based, um, but this is something um, that you can choose to share with first responders. Right now, the uh, fire department is using it um, on a regular basis, and the police department is going to be um, using it in the very near future. So um, if you could sign up for that, um, it's going to be a really great tool um, for us to be able to share not only with our residents, but on the back end with those first responders. So let's talk about response. Um, so we talked a lot about preparedness and everything that we can do um, to put together our shelter in place kit. We are gonna put together our evacuation kit. We're gonna put together our vehicle kit, but when are we gonna use these? Um, that comes with a response. Um, so these are actions that you're gonna take to protect yourself and your and your property um, during an emergency. This is taking all of those plans that um, we just made and putting them into action. So um, why would we need to use some of these? Um, so sheltering in place might be because of an act of violence or um, terrorism. There might be some type of civil disturbance, something happening in your neighborhood. Maybe there's police activity. Um, you know, it, we do often send emergency alerts um, out into um, neighborhoods. Like if there is, um, you know, some kind of civil disturbance going on, uh, we will work with the police department and um, send messages via your cell phone um, or email to let you know that there's something happening in your area, whether it's police activity um, or fire department activity, and we'll often ask you to shelter in place. So that means stay where you are, don't leave your house, um, stay out of the way, don't look out the windows. Um, it really means, you know, keep to yourself. You're not trying to draw any attention to yourself. Um, but also you might have to shelter in place if there is severe weather. Um, so if you, there is a tornado watch and that watch becomes a warning, um, you might have to shelter in place and stay where you are. And during a severe weather incident, and we'll talk about the different places where you can go um, to shelter in place, 
you might have to stay there for quite a long time, which is why we have a shelter in place kit for you to use. Um, my son is six years old and he, when we get, um, you know, a thunderstorm watch or warning, um, mostly during a watch, he's like, oh my gosh, I have to pack my snacks. And he will go and grab his lunchbox and he will put his favorite snacks and a juice box in there. And um, he puts it into the bathroom in case we get to that warning and we have to go in there. Um, so if you have, um, you know, someone that really enjoys special snacks or, you know, kids go through phases of what they like, um, use that time during a watch um, to actually help them prepare, even if it's on the spot um, for something like dinner or um, a snack to keep them occupied. Um, so lockdown, um, we would use this in um, like an extreme act of violence or um, civil disturbance. So for example, um, you'll hear lockdown more used um, as a term in schools um, where no one goes in or out. Um, so this is when the kids um, typically are going, um, you know, away from the windows and the doors um, into a place where, you know, it's, it's secure for them. They're staying super quiet, not drawing attention to themselves. Um, and you might have to be there for quite a long time. Um, so making sure that, you know, especially, you know, kids understand what that's like. Um, and then evacuation. There could be so many reasons of why you would have to evacuate your house, whether it's a house fire, um, it might be a gas leak um, or a chemical spill, something might happen. Um, it might be localized flooding. So right now I know we are under um, a flash flood warning um, that just got extended to this evening. So, um, you know, if there is flooding expected, um, you might get an alert from the National Weather Service letting you know that there is, um, you know, a flood warning in your area and to take action or seek higher ground if you are in an area that floods. Um, so taking those actions and knowing what to do is super important. And again, if you're evacuating, you have your go kit that you've already put together. So you're going to grab that kit and then make your decision. So the most important thing is use your plan right? We've talked about making a plan. We've put together your kits. Um, now it's time to actually use it. Act calm, but act serious. So sometimes, um, you know, people don't take it seriously and they think it's a joke, um, but we want to make sure that people get where they are going um, safely. If you are in your home and we um, issue a shelter in place warning, make sure you're taking that seriously. Um, especially for kids, you guys are role models um, for kids. So um, if you are acting calmly, but seriously, they are going to follow you. Um, so make sure that you're just setting a good example. So sheltering in place. So for example, um, if there was, you know, an act of violence or um, someone was acting disorderly, um, you might have to shelter in place. And that means um, making the decision that you're going to wait it out. Um, so if you're in immediate danger, you want to make sure that, you know, maybe you're closing your blinds um, and, you know, getting away from the windows and doors. Um, you should pre-identify a place in your house that is, you know, out of, out of the way of windows, out of the way of the doors, um, where, you know, you can even shut the door. It might be a bathroom. It might be a closet. Um, there's a lot of different places that you can go to make sure that you are out of um, immediate danger. So this um, also, so if there is an act of violence going on um, and you're, you're in the middle of it, we do want you to report the emergency, but we want you to report the emergency when you're safe. We want to get help to you we want to get help to you as fast as we can, um, but we also want to make sure that you're in a safe place before you're reporting it. This is also a great time to remember um, if you are sheltering in place because of an act of violence um, or something's happening, you have the ability in Fairfax County to text 911. Um, so this is a great opportunity um, where you upfront give those people your give 911 when you're texting 
um, your name, your phone number, and your address. The quicker you get them your address, the faster they have help on the way. Um, they will text you back. They will ask questions. Um, they, they want to get as much information um, as they can so that they can prepare the people who are responding, whether it's police or fire or both. Um, the more information you can give and the more information you can provide, um, the better the response is. So for example, um, as I was talking about before, um, this is a great little graphic um, just to talk about what sheltering in place means um, when there is like a tornado warning. Um, so looking at these, um, being in a mobile home or a manufactured home um, is never safe. But you'll see on the graphic that it says, take your go bag. Um, so if you are evacuating your home, you've made that bag, take it with you. You don't know if you're ever going back. And that's kind of the mindset that you should think is that you've put together this bag because you don't know when you're going back or if you're going back. Um, so make sure that you take it with you. Um, a manufactured home is never safe to stay in um, when you have a tornado warning. Um, you want to make sure that you can get to a sturdy um, building as quick as possible. Um, if you are in a one or two story building, you want to make sure either if you have a basement, um, the basement is the best. Um, if not, you want to go to the innermost um, part of your house um, away from all of windows and doors. Um, same thing goes in an apartment building. Um, even if you're in a multi-story building, the innermost part of the building um, away from windows and doors is always best. Um, if there is a cement stairwell, um, that's always a great place to go as well. Um, so make sure that you are paying attention. Um, a lot of public buildings um, actually have shelter in place signs um, all around them. Um, if you're in the airport, you'll see most of them are um, either at the bathroom or near the bathroom. Um, so you want to make sure that no matter where you're going, you're kind of always looking out um, for those different places that you could possibly um, take refuge. So during a lockdown, um, these most often happen because of acts of violence or a potential active shooter. Um, a lot of a lot of time, um, these um, schools are practicing for lockdowns all the time to make sure that the kids are comfortable and know exactly what to do. Um, so during an act of violence, um, you do want to make sure that you stay away from those windows and doors. Um, you can lock the door. Um, immediately, whether it's with a key or um, we're going to see a video in a minute um, that will show you, um, you know, potential other ways um, that you can um, block a doorway. Um, but you want to make sure that, you know, you turn off the lights, you close the blinds, um, everyone stays low, they stay away from windows and doors, and they're super quiet. Again, with kids um, or anyone in your house, being a great role model, um, you know, is super important. Um, my son, again, six years old in kindergarten, said that they played the quiet game, which is perfect. Um, who can be the quietest, the longest? Um, I know that when he was younger, um, they also had pretzels, um, and that was the snack of choice um, in their classroom during a lockdown. So the teacher had a snack in there, um, you know, to keep them quiet and occupied, which was a perfect solution. But they knew that because they practiced it. Um, so making sure that kids are familiar um, and even adults are familiar because these can be scary. Um, but we want to make sure that everyone knows what to do um, so you can take those actions immediately. Um, so having a plan, um, a lot of places, um, especially work and school, um, have a plan. So if you are going to a new school, if you are new at work, um, you know, make sure that you're asking about those um, different plans and um, doing drills. So, or participating in the drills. If they do hold drills um, or seminar where um, they're talking about the different plans, you do want to make sure that you're participating and paying attention. Um, that way, you can follow the instructions and get to safety as quickly as possible. 
So in just a minute, um, we're going to see the um, run, hide, fight video. Um, but this is the method um, that we've been teaching for um, several years now. Um, it's always best to run if you can get away from the active assailant. Um, the best thing that you can do is leave behind your belongings. Um, don't worry about what's there. Um, you know, run away. And, you know, if you if there's other people that you see on your way, you know, encourage them to run with you, but don't stop for anyone. You are the biggest priority. Um, when you get to safety, you know, either call or text 911. Um, and give them as much information as possible. If you've seen the active assailant, um, what do they look like? Uh, what's their location? Give them the address right away so that they can start um, dispatching help. Um, and if you can see what kind of weapons they have. If you don't have this information, that's okay. Give them the address or the closest location as quickly as possible so help is on the way. If you can't get away, you want to hide. Um, you want to try and get out of the assailant's view, um, you know, as quickly as possible and make it seem like you're not there. Um, most importantly, turn your cell phone on silent. Um, make sure that vibrate is off. Um, make sure that, you know, if there's a door, you can block the door. Um, turn the lights off. Close the blinds. Make it look like someone isn't there. Um, don't hide in groups because... Um, you want to make sure that like you can tuck yourself away um, as best as possible. And when people are congregating, um, it's not always the best. In a school situation, um, in, a, in a classroom, you don't really have much of a choice. But our teachers um, are trained every year um, on how um, to properly lock down. They go over in their classroom where the best place is. Um, some classrooms have bathrooms. Um, so no matter the situation, um, just do the best you can. And then at a last resort, um, is fight. So defend yourself. Um, anything can be used as a weapon, um, to neutralize that active assailant. Um, so just do the best that you can. Um, no one is, um, you know, telling you that you have to carry weapons. Um, it could be a stapler that you hit someone with. Um, it could be a chair. Um, it can be anything just to either neutralize or at least distract and, um, you know, maybe even get the weapon out of the person's hand um, that just buys more time. Um, so right now we're going to actually watch the run, hide, fight video um, just in case you haven't seen it. Um, it is, it, they are actors. Um, it does, um, emulate someone uh, being an active shooter. So um, if this is something that is sensitive to you, um, you might want to turn away for a couple minutes, um, but it is a great video and worth watching. It may feel like just another day at the office, but occasionally, Life feels more like an action movie than reality. The authorities are working hard to protect you and to protect our public spaces. But sometimes bad people do bad things. Their motivations are different. The warning signs may vary, but the devastating effects are the same. And unfortunately, you need to be prepared for the worst. If you were ever to find yourself in the middle of an active shooter event, your survival may depend on whether or not you have a plan. The plan doesn't have to be complicated. There are three things you could do that make a difference. Run, hide, fight. 
first and foremost. If you can get out, do. Always try and escape or evacuate, even when others insist on staying. Encourage others to leave with you, but don't let them slow you down with indecision. Remember what's important, you, not your stuff. Leave your belongings behind and try to find a way to get out safely. Trying to get yourself out of harm's way needs to be your number one priority. Once you are out of the line of fire, try to prevent others from walking into the danger zone and call 911. If you can't get out safely, you need to find a place to hide. Act quickly and quietly. Try to secure your hiding place the best you can. Turn out lights, and if possible, remember to lock doors. Silence your ringer and vibration mode on your cell phone. And if you can't find a safe room or closet, try to conceal yourself behind large objects that may protect you. Do your best to remain quiet and calm. As a last resort, if your life is at risk, whether you are alone or working together as a group, fight, act with aggression, improvise weapons, disarm him, and commit to taking the shooter down, no matter what. Try to be aware of your environment. Always have an exit plan. Know that in an incident like this, victims are generally chosen randomly. The event is unpredictable and may evolve quickly. The first responders on the scene are not there to evacuate or tend to the injured. They are well trained and are there to stop the shooter. Your actions can make a difference for your safety and survival. Be aware and be prepared. And if you find yourself facing an active shooter, there are three key things you need to remember to survive. Run, hide, fight. So now that you guys have seen the video, um, a lot of what we talked about um, was shown in that video. So a couple of key things to remember, um, leave your things behind. Um, you'll eventually get them, but don't let that slow you down. It's just stuff. Um, make sure you can get where you're going as quickly as possible. Um, and if not, you want to make sure that you can um, protect yourself. Never let other people slow you down. Um, if they don't want to leave, just leave them. Um, it, you are you and your safety um, is what you should be concerned about in that um, very point in time. Um, so we want to just you know also let you know um, the county does have um, several different training opportunities. Um, the police department offers an active shooter um, response training, um, and then um, we also offer. Um, here at the Department of Emergency Management Security, um, our 
uh, until help arrives um, course. So that goes over um, different response tactics, not only just stopping the bleed, um, but if you come across someone who's not breathing, um, if you come across an accident, um, there's a lot of different uh, techniques that we can actually teach you um, so that you can be the help until help arrives. Um, so if you're ever interested in, in those classes, um, if you visit us at um, fairfaxcounty.gov slash emergency management, um, we have a request um, button right there on the homepage where you can either um, request a presentation or request a training. Um, and if we can't do it, we would be happy to, um, you know, point you in the right direction and connect you with another agency um, that could provide that training. Um, so there's a lot of different things and um, ways that you can protect yourself. So the last thing we're going to talk about today um, is evacuating. Um, so this is um, much less common, but if there is something or an incident happening in the area um, and you are um, asked to evacuate, um, please take those seriously. This means that you're going to use your plan whether you're evacuating to somewhere close, that could be a family or a friend. Um, it could even be your local library um, or community center or rec center, wherever you've identified um, as that very close place. Um, but it might be somewhere that's further away. It might be a family member um, or maybe, you know, an out-of-state contact that you've decided if you have to evacuate that that's where you're going to go. Um, if you have the ability, give them heads up that you're on their way, on your way, um, just so that they know. Um, you might, you know, experience roads closed or um, detours. So make sure that you're signed up for Fairfax Alerts so that you can get those traffic messages. Um, you'll also get the, the weather messages um, that come from the National Weather Service. So these are all really good things. Um, Make sure that you, you know, are keeping your car fueled. Um, I know that I am guilty of um, kind of waiting to the last minute, um, you know, to, to put gas in my car. Um, but I've learned that it's always better, um, you know, just to have a full tank um, and try to keep it that way. So, um, you know, do the best that you can, um, especially, uh, you know, for some reason, if we experience gas shortages, um, which we've seen over the past couple of years, um, this is just another preparedness um, technique to have in your back pocket. So if you're um, evacuating a building, um, this could, you know, any kind of structure, whether it is um, your house or your place of worship, um, where you work, um, somewhere you're visiting, always make sure you know where the exits are. Um, you know, we ask that you, um, if you see something, say something. Um, but there's a couple of other things that go along with that. See something, say something. Um, if you see something suspicious, say it. Tell someone. Um, you can anonymously report it um, in Virginia with an app called CSAY. Um, and it, it's anonymous and it goes right to Virginia State Police who work with our local jurisdictions. Um, you also want to make sure that you know where all of those exits are. Um, locate those shelter in place locations. Many businesses and um, places of work and worship um, all have these things pre-laid out for you. Um, so if you just follow the directions um, and look um, when you get somewhere, it's always helpful. Um, remember during an emergency, um, especially if the fire alarm is going off, um, Elevators typically won't even work. Um, so if someone has a disability or access and functional need um, that might require extra help, um, it's always great to help be a part of their plan um, before that happens. If there is someone who is a wheelchair user, um, check and see if they have um, evacuation chairs that are um, located in those fire exits um, and offer to be part of that person's plan. If you know, if you know that they have a disability where they're not going to be able to get down the stairs, hey, have you made a plan to get out of here? Um, you know, I'd love to, to help um, be part of your plan um, if I'm here. And then maybe get some other people um, to just jump along and be a part of that person's plan as well. Um, you know, if you are in an area that is experiencing a problem, um, don't stay and try and figure out what's going on. Um, 
you know, don't try to assist first responders. They're trained to do um, what they're supposed to do. And just like we saw, um, if there's an active shooter, um, when they go to respond, they're not responding immediately to the people that are hurt. They are responding to neutralize the shooter so that no one further gets hurt. They will come back for the people that are injured when that person is neutralized. Um, we want to prevent anyone else from getting hurt. And then, um, you know, our first responders will go back um, to help those people. So just know that while they're, they're working on, you know, making sure that active shooter is done, other people are coming to the scene and they are staging, whether you see them or not, um, you know, they're staging either close to the scene or near the scene um, to be, re to be ready to respond and get in there as quickly as possible um, once, once it is safe to do so. Um, so just keep those things in mind. Um, so talking about all this, um, I know this can be scary stuff. Um, a lot of this is outlined again in our community emergency response guide. Um, we have a calendar of events where we have um, a lot of our um, trainings that we are offering to the public. Um, I know that in October um, coming up, we have um, a, an Until Help Arrives offering um, at McLean Community Center. Um, we do trainings upon request as well. So if you have any friends or family or a group that you want um, us to come out to um, and do the training, we are more than happy to come out and do that. Um, coming up next in August, um, I can't believe it. I know it's only the beginning of July, um, but just thinking about um, going back to school, um, we are going to talk about youth preparedness and how we can talk to our kids um, about different scenarios and different drills that they um, might come along um, at the beginning of the year. Um, so uh, if you guys have any questions, um, you can always re reach out to us um, via email or phone. Um, and if you want to request one of those preparedness presentations, um, you know, you can just go on and do so. But thank you so much for joining us again for our monthly webinar. Um, and we look forward to seeing you in August.